So maybe you've been preserving food for a while and maybe you're just getting started. Either way, a pressure canner is a great tool to add to your kit. So let's talk about it. Today we're going to talk about this, a weighted gauge pressure canner. This particular one is made by Graniteware. This one's really cool because it can also be used as a pressure steamer and as a pressure cooker. Remember, not all pressure canners can be used as cookers, so make sure you check with manufacturers before you assume that you can. Now, there's a couple of different ways to home can things. There's using a pressure canner, and there's using a water bath canner. In a water bath canner, you can preserve things like pickles because they have vinegar or they're fermented. You can preserve tomatoes, fruits, and other things that are high in acid. In a pressure canner, you can preserve other things that are not high in acid, like fish, meats, soups, and a lot of vegetables that are not pickled. So we talk about this water bath canning in a whole nother video. All right, so why do we pressure can? There's a little creature out there, a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. Now, normally this bacteria is all over the place. It's outside and it's on your food and it's probably on you at any given time, but it doesn't do anything that harms you. However, if you take that bacteria and put it in an anaerobic environment, somewhere without oxygen, which is what we do when we can things, right? We vacuum seal them. It actually changes form and creates a spore and a toxin. That toxin is what causes something called botulism. The spores that this thing creates can survive the boiling point of water, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. That's as hot as things get in that water bath canner. We put it in here, a pressure canner. In this process, we build up steam on the inside of this thing to a certain pressure, which actually raises the temperature significantly above the boiling point of water. At a sustained length of time, which your recipe will specify, different for each food, that is plenty to destroy the bacteria and its spores. So while that bacteria is worth being scared of because it is far worse than just a normal case of food sickness, it's not enough to scare you away from canning because pressure canning is super, super easy. We're using a 20 quart weighted gauge pressure canner. This one's made by Graniteware. Let's look over the components just so you can fully understand this thing. It comes with the canner body, of course, which is essentially a large pot, the steamer insert for steaming tamales or vegetables, a canning rack, this is what keeps your mason jars from contacting the heat source underneath and possibly cracking, a lid gasket sealing ring, the lid itself, which includes a vent pipe and two backup safety valves, and a special locking pin inside one of the handles. And finally, there's the three-piece pressure regulator. There's the regulator itself, which can create an environment at five pounds per square inch pressure. If you add one weight, you take it up to 10 pounds, and you add another weight, you take it up to 15. First, always make sure everything is in full working order. First thing to do is take a look at the vent pipe. You can just look right through that little pinhole and make sure that you can see through to the other side. If there are any obstructions, just unfold a little paper clip and stick it through there and knock them out. Make sure that it's clean. Then look at each nut and component on the bottom side of the lid and make sure that they're all clean as well. Next, we'll put the lid gasket sealing ring in the lid and we'll make sure that it is securely tucked inside the groove. And then let's actually can something. So first we'll take three quarts of water and we'll put them in here. Now remember, unlike water bath canning, we are not submerging jars underwater. We're just putting a little bit of water in there, about this much. And when that water heats up, it's what's gonna steam and build up the pressure on the inside of this thing. Going on a practice run like this and throwing some jars that just have water in them is a great way to get familiar with the pressure canner. You wanna get really close with it and become best friends and even name it. I'm gonna call mine Bessie. We'll put the canning rack in there, again, to make sure that the jars are elevated from the bottom of the pot. And then we'll place our jars on the canning rack. Normally they'd be full of our fish or our soup or whatever it is we're canning, of course. We'll place the lid on the canner, by lining the arrow on the lid with the arrow on the canner, and then pressing down a bit and turning it clockwise or to the right. Put the whole thing on a level burner, either gas or electric. Using a relatively high heat setting, we're gonna start heating the canner until a steady stream of steam starts escaping out of the vent pipe. Remember that the regulator and the weights are not yet on the vent pipe. As soon as the steam is just streaming out of there, set a timer for 10 minutes and let that work. After 10 minutes, you can take your regulator with the appropriate amount of weight on it and just slip it over the vent pipe. 
Now, a quick note, if you live up on a mountain somewhere or anywhere above a thousand feet, because pressure in the air around you changes the higher in elevation you live, the more it's gonna affect the pressure inside this canner and the length of time you need to cook your food. So there should be adjustments that'll be made to the time. So you've still got the whole thing on a pretty high heat, right? Now that you have the regulator on there, pressure is building up. And once there's a little bit in there, then the little cover lock inside the handle is gonna pop up. A few minutes later, you'll see the regulator start to rock. At first, it may go slow, or at first, it may go really fast. Be ready for it, be standing there. As soon as it begins to rock, you can turn your heat way down to low or almost low. It'll take a little bit of adjusting back and forth probably, but eventually you're gonna get this thing to a nice consistent rocking pattern. As soon as you've found that pattern, it's not stopping and then starting again, and it's not going crazy, then start your timer for the amount of time indicated on the recipe. It's not hard. Once you've found that magic spot, you can usually sit near it, read a book, get on the computer, do whatever you need to do. Just keep an eye on it. When the processing time has ended, according to your recipe, then turn the burner off, and then let everything sit. Don't mess with it. It's really, really hot inside and you have glass jars in there. So if you start jostling it around, you can imagine some damage could happen. Just leave it there. Pressure will slowly come down on its own. With this canner, it usually takes about eight to 15 minutes, somewhere in there. And then this little pin in the handle will drop down. You can carefully remove the regulator and the weights. Now at this point, there's no pressure left in there, but it is wise to just let it sit for another 10 minutes or so. That's gonna let both pressure and temperature begin to equalize with the outside world. You can remove the lid, tip it towards you so the steam does not burn your face, and set it aside. Remove your jars from the canner with a jar lifter and place them on a cloth or a wooden cutting board or something that doesn't mind getting a little hot, and then leave them alone. They have not begun to cool enough to securely make a vacuum seal. Usually overnight is fine, and the next day you can come along, remove the rings, check the seals, label and date them, and stick them on a shelf. And of course, share them with family and friends. That's what we do. So well done, you are well on your way to pressure canning adventures. Now we have some more videos on how to use this exact canner as a pressure cooker and as a pressure steamer for things like tamales. So look for those, consider subscribing, and of course go head over to the Mason Jar Suite to see other videos about canning and food preservation of all types. Leave us a comment, let us know if you have any questions. And I bid you happy canning.